So this is all about the PPDS method and how it keeps crabs alive after purchase, rescue, and adoption. So basically, how to keep your crabs alive after they come to live with you. And um, we're just going to get right into this. Um, a little bit about me. My name is Andrea Pearson. I'm a USA Today bestselling author of over 75 fantasy titles, uh, a couple of which have hit the USA Today bestselling. Oh, <laughs> USA Today bestselling author of over 75 fantasy titles. I do have one romance that hit the USA Today bestsellers list. But anyway, that's under my name, Andrea Pearson. That's my Andrea Skinner. You guys will know me as Andrea Skinner from the Facebook group. And um, I go by Andrea Pearson because that's my maiden name. And I was doing it before I met my husband. So. I'm an artist and musician. I'm married to an artist and musician. He's actually a professional artist. He does a whole bunch of stuff um, for it's pretty cool. And yes, yeah, I love fantasy. It's fun. Um, we homeschool our three kids. We have their ages eight, five, and three. Oh no, eight, five, and two. I know my kids' ages. <laughs> yeah, I'm a hermit crab enthusiast. Enthusiast. And okay, so I'll just tell you about my hermit crab journey. Um, in Last May, I just, I felt really, really strongly that we needed to get pets for the kids, like really strongly. I was like, our five-year-old who was then four was really struggling emotionally. He's got like some anxiety he's dealing with. He's very shy and very, very nervous around people. And I was like, we need to get pets for our kids. And so I was like, but my life is really crazy because I, I, I'm an author and I've got tons of deadlines and I've got kids and we homeschool and it's been really insane. Yay. Awesome. Virtual homeschool, um, virtual field trip. And yes, I've been helping Stacy. Stacy's fantastic. We're both really busy, so it's been fun. Um, anyway, so I asked around. I was like, my life is really busy. I need some really low maintenance pets that would be good for kids. And I had all sorts of suggestions across the board. And and but one person said hermit crabs, and I was like, I had no idea that hermit crabs were a pet because I live in state in the country. And I I mean, we don't people out here. I've never known anybody who had a hermit crab. And I mean. It's very uncommon. Um, anyway, so I was like, okay, but my personality is I don't do anything unless I do it right. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm not getting hermit crabs unless I know exactly what I'm getting into. And so I spent several weeks researching, and like it says there, researching Crab Street Journal and watching Crab Central Station videos basically on on repeat um, over and over all the time just before adopting. And I and I joined the Facebook group, and I really, really study things up in there, read through all of the units and the, the study lessons and all the files, everything before I um, adopted our first three hermit crabs. And by that point, of course, I knew that the hermit crabs were not going to be for my kids. <laughs> so, um, yes, boy, were they wrong. Hermit crabs are easy once you have your system down and you've got your setup perfect and everything. They're really easy at that point, but they are not great pets for kids. Kids like hands-on. Kids need that emotional bond. By the way, we are getting a dog, so <laughs> just, I didn't want a dog. We're getting a dog. He's coming next week, so I'm really excited about that and and very, very um, um, Oh, Katrina. Um, because I was like, I want to be able to post about my dog. But anyway, um, sorry, I'm kind of, yeah, we're going to continue, move on. Um, anyway, so we own eight hermit crabs. I'm finally getting some hands-on experience. Actually, we own seven hermit crabs, um, one of them. And if you attended my, um, my whatchamacallit yesterday, the desert hermit crab keeper thingy, then you'll know that one of my captive bred hermit crab babies did die. And that was really absolutely awful. Very, very upsetting. It was because my tank was dry. Go back in the past, watch that presentation if you want to know about um, about how important humidity in the sub is for tank for babies. Okay, so Jen says you sound like me. I don't have any hermits yet, but I've been planning for months. Yep, that's the way I am. And a dog. We're getting a, a miniature schnauzer. Okay, I'm gonna go into the into this. Go ahead and put your questions, things like that. And if I'm able to answer them immediately, I will in the comments, the chats. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, so our tank is a 90 gallon tank. We started with the, um, I bought a 30 gallon and then before I started researching, I was like, this is not going to work. So then I bought a, um, a 55 gallon and then upgraded to a 90 gallon. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about what the PPDS method is, why it's necessary, and then we're going to go over a bunch of nuts and bolts about setting up your tank, your heat and humidity, water, food, and we'll troubleshoot 
humidity issues, problems in the tanks like surface molts, aggression, life is life is life lessness. <laughs> then we're gonna go over pictures of um, of tanks that I stole from online, and they were PPDS tanks, and I could not find a more than one of a PPDS tank that was the way it should be. And so instead I decided to take the pictures and um, we're gonna discuss what's wrong with them and what's right with them just to help solidify the different principles. And then we'll go over questions. Okay, so what is the PPDS method? It is called, it's basically short for, short for post-purchase death syndrome. It happens because of the poor unethical treatment of crabs when they're captured from the wild. And then when in the pet shops before you buy them at the, the what are those called? The little, the little shops, the little dinky hermit crab huts. I don't know what they're called. I've never been to one. I've never actually seen one because I live in Utah. <laughs> um, they're starved. They're dehydrated. They're struggling to breathe. They're cold. Um, most crabs die within a year of purchase and they have been dubbed a throwaway pet, which is just horrible. Um, the PPDS method will keep your hermit crab alive and it safely adjusts them to healthy conditions. So why it's necessary. Hermit crabs require certain levels of heat and humidity and putting them in the tank right away with the correct levels, especially with sub because they go down, they bury down and they basically go down to die. Um, sometimes they go down to molt. I mean, we don't know, maybe they're trying not to, you know, they're trying to survive, but they don't survive and they end up passing away while they're molt molting. So that causes a premature death. And then it happens if they're not cared for correctly, which is unfortunate because most people I think would care for them correctly if they knew how to do that. Anyway, um, the PPDS method, method helps crabs gradually adjust to proper heat and humidity. Okay, so my crabs have had good heat humidity and I've, I've seen people ask this, they're like, a really great place. Should I still do the PPDS method? And the answer is yes. You want to keep your tank, your crabs isolated. If you have a main tank, you're adopting new crabs. Don't introduce them right into your main tank because you don't want to introduce any anything that can you know that could cause problems for your current tank. And you obviously can't. Oh gosh, that's a. You can't boil your crabs before putting them. That's what you, we usually do. You know, we freeze, we boil, we we bake. Those kinds of things. Obviously, you cannot do with your crabs. That was so insensitive. I, it, my brain just fires randomly. So um, the PPDS method isn't just about heat and humidity. It's about building strength through proper nutrition. And then also making sure that the crabs that you have, you're not introducing bad um, outside foreign contaminants into your main tank. Anyway, so it's helping your crab have what he or she needs to survive their next molt. Okay, so the nuts and all right, so <laughs> setting up the tank. Go check out Crab Central Station's videos. They're so fantastic. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Okay, so in short, you're gonna wanna have a half inch half inch to one inch play sand. It depends on the size of the crabs. If your crabs are small, I would inch, maybe even half an inch, but like when I, my first set of hermit crabs, I kept them about half an inch and then the quarter, I mean, my next bunch of hermit crabs, they were just tiny. They're like about this big. So I kept them in a quarter inch of sand. And the reason for that is because they push things around all the sand into one quarter and then trying to bury in into it. So anyway, so um, yeah, so you don't want to use too much sand. You don't want them to be able to bury. You don't want them to be able to hide. You want to be able to watch them all the time. It's kind of creepy, but you get to be a peeping Tom in this case. Um, we don't care about that at this point. Um, anyway, so you're going to lightly sprinkle eco earth on top and that basically helps to hold the humidity into there because sand alone doesn't always hold at, uh, the humidity perfectly. And then you're going to add in some moss as well. Again, they like to munch on it and it's also good for that humidity, but you don't want to put enough in there for them to hide in. Okay, so the hides, you need to be able to monitor them, monitor them like I said. Some crabs hide so they can die which is unfortunate. They're like, I don't know, we had, when I was, our first pet was a cat when I was about um, eight or nine years old and he got caught and this was very sad. He got caught in a rat trap that a neighbor set up, we think set up for our cat, which is really sad. And he kept trying to escape and hide from us. And honestly, we kind of feel like his situation was prolonged because we didn't realize he didn't want to be around us because as soon as he was alone, then he passed away. And I think animals are that way. They like that privacy. Um, they take care of themselves. And I'm sorry, this is a this is sensitive subject. It's kind of a little bit graphic. I apologize. I should have given a warning ahead of time. But 
Um, so with setting, when you're setting up your tank, you want to give them lots of options of food. And I'll talk about this quite a bit more later. You want to give them something to climb on. And I'm going to say in the beginning, this is not as important to be, especially if you get them from a hermit crab, like a, one of those tourist shops or from a pet store in the beginning, just keep things absolutely basic. If your hermit crabs are relatively healthy, when you get them, something to climb on is fine in the beginning. Um, but, it, but you want to keep it as basic as possible in the very beginning. Okay, you want to have a shell shop that has three to five um, shells per crab. And there's you can find information on what kind of shells, what size. That's not the purpose of this, but um, that kind of information is all over the place. Uh, make sure you have a saltwater pool, a freshwater pool uh, under the tank here. A few inches above the sand. Um, you're going to want a thermometer and a humidity gauge. They need to hygrometer, right? Isn't that what a humidity gauge is? Um, they need to be calibrated. And I don't think I go over that, how to calibrate, just research that. You can ask me about that later and I will explain how to calibrate. Um, thermostat's not necessary, but it'll make your life much easier, so much easier. Um, sorry, we have landscapers here right now. They're like tearing up my yard. <laughs> so I'm very trying not to get distracted. You do not need to do PPDS with captive babies, right? The cap. Um, I would say no, I didn't, um, because you know, it's coming from Mary's colony. It's not like she's going to be sending you poison, you know, like little bits of poison with the crabs. I don't know. I think it's going to be up to you whether you do or not. Um, I did not. I, I, yeah, I did not. I ended up putting them. They were totally fine. <clears throat> um, okay. So setting up your tank continued light on top of the tank. LED is the best because it emits very little heat. You do not want to use heat lamps because it does zap all the humidity out of your tank. Um, and it can make it to it. So it's too warm in a tank. And then, um, the camera, this is obviously optional, but I'm, I strongly, strongly recommend cameras because it helps you monitor your crabs progress. And the wise camera is what most of us use. They're like 20, between 20 and $25 on Amazon. And then of course you're going to want a sealed lid. Um, hey moderator, could you go get me a glass of water, please? <laughs> Just kidding. Should have thought of that before I started, right? <laughs> okay. So the size of the tank is <laughs> go get one. Yeah. But I want, I don't want you guys to watch me leave. <laughs> We aren't going away. Hey, we're not. Okay. I'm going to turn off my camera because I don't like having people watch my <laughs> turn off the camera door. Okay. I will be back really fast. Uh, Stacy called me a dork. Um, all growing up, dork was a term of endearment. I did not realize the dork was an insult to other people until I called my first boyfriend a dork. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't think it was funny. All right. So um, when you're setting up your PPDS tank, the size is not a big deal because you're not going to be needing that molting space. That's the reason why tanks, you want them bigger is mainly because of molting, but also because then they're not crowded. Let's see, which wise camera do I have a link? I can, we can, I can provide a link, but not at this point. Um, cameras go in the tank. Yes. Some people put them in the tank. Yes, that's a great idea. Use the use the affiliate code for, for the Lycos. Let's see, Walmart has some too. That's where I got mine. That's nice. They're 35 each now. Ugh, that's horrible. Slowly going out of stock at my Walmart too. Hope to pick some up before they disappear. Oh, that that's probably true, Stacy. We bought them all. Okay, oops. Okay, so um, if you have things for them to climb on, your crabs will be totally fine. The smaller tanks, though, may, uh, make sure you remember this, it's harder to maintain proper heat and humidity in them. And you can use a temporary tank, like a 10-gallon main tank. So using your main tank as your PPDS tank, there is not a lot of information out there on this. I did, I searched and searched and searched and searched and did not find enough that 
showed. And I think I could probably find it now just because I'm more familiar with everything now. But back in the day, I was like looking, everyone couldn't figure out how to turn your main tank into, um, from a PBDS tank into a main tank. And what you're doing is you're gradually adjusting it to your permanent home. <clears throat> As tedious, I don't recommend doing it. It requires you to add the five to one place and eco earth a couple inches at a time. So you're gradually tank level up higher and higher. And this is this problematic though with molten crabs because you want to be very, very careful um, with um, not putting too much weight above them. You, you it, it makes you adjust your decorations, your pools, etc. And again, it can make your heat and your humidity a challenge. Um, I would just say just buy a 10 gallon, um, 10 gallon tank. Um, Walmart has them for like $14. At least that's how much it cost me. Okay, so heat and humidity. We're going to talk about the nuts and bolts again, um, but the heat and the humidity thingy. So they go hand in hand. Your heat will help your humidity and vice versa. Um, so you're going to start with temperature and, and start with the temperature and the humidity of the location where you got the crabs. And if you're not sure what it is, then give it your best guess. Um, so degrees with 77 or 72 percent humidity and then you're going to gradually increase that one degree and one percentage every three to five days and then it, you, it's going to depend on how your crabs do and it can be cr uh, tricky especially with the humidity uh it's really difficult to get that but it's possible so you just do your best and then when to increase your heat and humidity you're going to want to wait at least three days from the last increase and then five if your crabs are lethargic and so, okay, so I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So you get your tank set up, you get, you have a little bit of sand in it, you get your pools in there, you make sure your heat and humidity are right around 72 degrees and 72% humidity or where they were in the last place. And um, what I've found is if I don't know what the last place is, I usually start around 72 degrees and 72% humidity because estimates, you don't want it to be much lower than that because it's kind of dangerous. Um, and then you will, after you've got right around there, then you'll put your crabs in and then you wait three to five days and see how they do in that setting. If they don't do super well, then you're going to want to um, follow what I'll be giving in just a little bit. So, so if they're doing okay, raise the heat and humidity one, one um, degree or one number um, after three days, five if the crabs are lethargic. And all, um, just something to keep in mind, you're not just getting them used to the heat and the humidity, but you're also helping them build their strength. So when all of the crabs are in the tank are doing well is when you, in, when you do move up one digit. And then how do you know if you're doing well? Well, you watch them, you monitor their activity levels, uh, how much they're eating, how much they're, you know, they're climbing and moving around, digging, crabby things. So most activity happens at night and that's why you would want a camera. You'll also need a micro SD memory chip thing because you can do time lapses with the wise cameras. Then you'll watch them the next day just to see how monitor, how active your crabs have been. If your crab, if you have a crab that's just been sitting around, then you know it's a problem. Don't, don't increase the heat and humidity. Okay. You're going to adjust up when all of your crabs are active at night. So when they're all eating, drinking, moving, um, you might not see them drink often. I would say my crabs only drink once every two days, sometimes once every three days, they carry water in their shells. Um, and so the big thing I see people ask and talk about is, are they active? Um, even if they're active, um, okay, sorry, I took that in a different direction. Okay. So if, if they are active, you're still going to want to leave them at each increment for at least three days. You don't want to, you don't want to increase things when, and get them, move them through the PBDS system method too quickly because then it doesn't allow them to build up their, their nutrition. So the PBDS method is not just about heat humidity levels. It is also about nutrition. I'm going to make that point a few times here. Okay. So how to adjust up for your heat, use a make your life way easier. It does help a lot. Um, it helps you control the temperature and makes, I mean, you just push the button once up, right? And that's super easy. If you don't have a thermostat, then you can cover it with a thin blanket. You can insulate the sides. You can cover with more blanket, use a thicker blanket, all of that. Um, then you can recognize the temperature, um, recognize that the temperature of your house will affect things greatly. Okay. I'm moving this over here. Okay. There we go. Okay, so um, um, 
you, you might have to insulate the sides anyway just to get your heat where it needs to be even if you don't have uh, even if you're not trying to increase it yet just because depending on the temperature of your house and how big of a, of a heater you bought you're going to need to do something i have with pretty much every tank i've had okay so the nuts and bolts of water um salt and fresh water pools you want them to be deep enough for your largest crab to submerge in and the salt water is going to need to be prime treated and you'll use instant ocean and fresh water you're going to want to prime treat that and use tap water now prime is a is a type of it's, it's secum s-e-a-c-h-a-m i believe secum prime and you can buy that in pet stores i'm going to give you a hint Pet stores, local pet stores sold it for about $7 for a bottle about this big. Amazon sold it for like $4. So I bought it from Amazon. Um, and then tap water. The reason you want to use tap water is because it has minerals in it that hermit crabs need. And you don't want to use filtered water, no distilled water. Uh, tap water is totally fine as long as it's prime treated. And you can use bottled water, but tap water is generally better. And okay, so... Put the pools in front of your heater. It helps um, increase the humidity because it heats the water up and helps evaporate it. You're going to change that every one to two days. And if you're using bubblers, every three to five days. Bubblers, um, in the beginning, I did not use bubblers. I still don't use bubblers in my PPDS tank. I've got my hermit crab set up in a temporary tank right now because of our move. And um, um, they, yeah, I don't use bubblers in that just because the humidity is already high enough without them. Okay, so food. This is one of the most important parts. I mean, it's all really important, but if your hermit crabs came from a location where they were taking care of the heat and humidity, they're probably have been, they will probably have skimped a little bit on the food. So this is one of the most important parts of the PPDS method. So feed from all the main food groups almost every single day. Um, all the main food groups every day. You're going to feed them every, uh, every one of the main food groups needs to be fed every day. But protein needs to be 50% of your offerings. And this is something that confused me in the beginning. It's not 50% of the time, it's 50%. So if you've got fruits and veggies and fats and calcium and all that, your protein needs to be 50% of the whole total of what you're, what you're offering to them because they are scavengers and they eat a lot of, a lot of dead creatures out in the wild. Um, fruits and veggies will help with their color and energy. The protein will keep them from eating each other, which is a uh, very blunt of me to say, but it's true. You want to make sure that you're giving them anything bad happens they will be they will not be tempted to cannibalize and that that does happen um i have had i mean i i've i've since i've had hermit crabs i have met uh one or two other people local and one of them said that no it wasn't local sorry it was on facebook i've come in i post on facebook and said that uh, i bought hermit crabs one of my friends that lives in toronto which is where i used to live said that they used to have hermit crabs and they were um and they ended up eating each other, which is really, really unfortunate. And as Stacy says, animal proteins are important, not just plant proteins. So you can give them plant proteins, and that's totally fine. Like nuts, seeds, they eat things like that quite a bit. But you have to make sure you're giving them animal proteins. Um, fruits and veggies will help with the color and their energy, like I said. Fat helps with successful molting. Um, calcium helps build strong exoskeletons. You can see that all of these things, if they are not being provided these things, you can see why a hermit crab would not survive for very long because the um, the nutrition that they've got built in their system from when they were wild does not last a very, very long time. Um, fun foods and carbs, like so popcorn, herbivore poop, leaves, um, bark, wood, things like that. It gives them energy. They enjoy eating it. It just adds to their, it basically helps replicate what they eat out in the wild. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to get a drink. Did my camera. <laughs> I don't like the sound of people swallowing, so I didn't make you guys uh, endure it. Okay, a must in every tank. Green sand, worm castings. Both of them offer um, additional nutrients. They're very common in, out in the wild where they live. And um, I liked uh, Jeannie's comment here. She says she makes her animal protein mostly fish-based or sea animal-based because, I mean, that's fantastic because our hermit crabs are, they live near the ocean. And so they use, I mean, they're used to having access to that stuff. It's And I've also noticed they love that stuff, like the shrimp and things like that. They just love it. Okay, so salt. Uh, unless unless it's sea salt, and these are foods to avoid, only use it a little tiny, tiny bit. I mean, 
wait, that's background back backwards. Do not use salt unless it's sea salt. And then if it's no preservatives, no sugar at all. Absolutely no sugar. So like if you buy raisins, make sure that they do not have sugar included. Um, no pesticides, herbicides. You want to make sure it's organic. And then worm castings. And yes, I put that under foods to av avoid. I'm like, but you just said to include worm castings. I know, I know. But some crabs will only eat worm castings. And I had my biggest crab, Neptune, which is a she, we found out, would only eat worm castings. It was for weeks on end. And I was like, is this normal? And then I don't remember which mod it was, but a year ago the mod was like, um, no, that's not good. You need to remove the worm castings for a little while. So it's fine if it only happens for the first week or so and if they're active, but if they consistently only eat worm castings, especially while they're in PPDS, you need to remove it for a few days so they get other nutrients too. When it's in the main tank, I'm not super worried about it because by then they kind of, they, they have what they need, but you want to make sure that they're eating a well-balanced diet while you're there in the PPDS method so that they can build up the other nutrients because worm castings does not offer everything they need. Let's see. Green sand. Green sand is a type of algae from what I understand and is powdered up and dried. Um, somebody can um, correct me if that's accurate or inaccurate. Some of the antiplants, if I'm correct, but good for crabs too. Yeah, they use it. It's, they use it quite widely as a organic sediment from the ocean floor. There we go. Let's see. I think I can move my worm castings to eat it more than other stuff. And and again, it doesn't it doesn't matter super much if this is not your PPDS method, but in PPDS it does make a difference. And sometimes it's okay to vary things up, you know, remove it for a couple of days because it can reinvigorate their interest in other things. Um, okay, so the more on food, uh, offer new food every single day. Don't offer the same food more than once in a seven day period. The whole point of this is to to reengage their interest in food that they should be eating because in the beginning when you first get them when they're really lethargic they're going to be like if you offer them the same thing over and over again their curiosity their desire to explore and try things and it does and that you know when they try something new it reminds them of basically what it was like before they got um um what's the word um removed from their main habitat also it catches their interest and so that gets them eating and trying new things uh let's see so monitor how they react to it this is where the camera comes in handy and i use paint trays from the dollar store they're like they have little six spots on them for uh food i mean sorry for paint and, and i mark on them like i either scratch into it or whatever um like p for protein and, and v for veggies and c for calcium and f for fat and then i keep it in the in my tank the exact same place uh, position the same way so that when i watch my time lapse i know exactly what they're eating you can also write it down i did that for a while i kept a very very serious track before i followed the menu that i've got here um, of what they were eating and just which position it was inside of that that little paint tray and then, so that camera does come in handy right there. It allows you to watch what they're eating. If they don't eat something, don't offer it again. Uh, there's a little caveat caveat here, right here, here. Uh, not for the PPDS method. I would say, okay, I'll get that to that in just a minute. But some foods they don't need when they're first offered and they will need at the next offering. So if you've got a food in the PPDS method in that first week that they won't eat, I would say don't offer it again for probably two weeks, maybe three weeks, because sometimes they won't ever touch it and you want to be giving them foods that they want to eat, but also because it might not be something that they need at that moment. So if they don't need more calcium, then don't give them that same source of calcium. Um, and they won't eat it if they don't need it. But you want to offer foods that they're going to be interested in at this point. And uh, my hermit crabs will go through phases where they won't touch mealworms and then they just eat, they just devour them. And so again, don't assume that they will never eat it again if you offer it once and they don't eat it. That's not the case. They will, they go through phases. At least mine do. I mean, I'm going to get caught up on comments here. Crab napped, yes. Okay, Stacey said, there's a study that shows that wild crabs will not eat from the same food source two days in a row. This is a survival mechanism, I'm sure, to avoid eating something unsafe in a quantity that might harm them. <clears throat> My crabs are way too trusting to listen to that instinct by now. <laughs> it's so true. Something that's decaying and it's okay to, go, okay, um, to eat today, but in two days it might not be. Yes, I'm glad. I'm glad mine are, mine are the only ones that are picky. It's like my toddler. My toddler will eat something really insane three weeks. 
Okay, so let's see, continuing. Problems in the tank. Um, okay, so heat and humidity. So we're gonna, like this is when you're troubleshooting and wanting to find out why, why something is not working. So if you're having problems with your heat and your humidity, heat or humidity, check that your lid is really sealed. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna get a drink. live in a desert, right? <laughs> I'm talking, my voice goes dead, gets too dry. So check your that your lid is sealed. Check that your sandcastle is consistency is, um, sorry, that your sub is sandcastle consistency. Uh, having it sandcastle consistency is not important for molting during PPDS, but it does help hold humidity. So if your sand is too dry, then your, ta your tank's going to be too dry. Use um, moss and eco earth. Um, they help a ton with maintaining that that humidity. Um, insulate the tank, especially around the heater. That'll help the I also use a blanket. I probably should have separated these out according to heat and humidity. But press and seal. Um, I think this is Rita. Isn't Rita the Rita's the one who loves uh, press and seal? It's fantastic. You can use it to cover up holes and cracks in the lid. If you're having problems with humidity and you have tiny, tiny little holes, sometimes, depending on where, where you live, those holes can actually be problematic. So make sure you cover those up. And I live in a place where that actually makes a difference. So, okay, so silicone, 100% with no mold prohibitors will be your best friend. You're going to take it, so you've got your tank. You've got your tank, um, and I'm making sure you can actually see. You got your tank, and and you've got your lid. You're gonna put the silicone around the edge of your tank, not between the tank and the lid. You're you're not gonna try to you know um, silicone your lid on. You're gonna make it so that the silicone's just still remove the lid, but so you have like an airtight barrier. <clears throat> okay, problems in the tank. Surface molts. Um, before you have this problem, you want to make sure you have a two liter bottle on hand. You're going to cut it in half, get rid of the bottom part. You're not going to use the bottom part of it. But if you have a surface mold, you're going to take that two liter, the top half of the two liter, and you're going to push it all the way. You're going to surround the molting crab. You're going to push the, the two liter thing down to the bottom, all the way down to the bottom of the tank. And, um, so that it surrounds that little hermit crab, it'll that lid through the opening in the top. And this is not something that you're going to want to do in a main tank because the um, the two liter bottle, when you push it all the way down, that provides makes it so it prevents the other crabs from coming in and having access to the molting crab. So when you're in a main tank, you would take it, you would gently scoop it and take it and put it inside of a little Tupperware, and um, and then not bother it. <clears throat> So um, with with a surface molt in a PPDS tank, though, get that two liter bottle. You're gonna push all the way down to the bottom of the tank around the molting crab, and then don't bother the crab. It can take a long time. I mean, some molts can take weeks, uh, as we all know, or as most of us know. You're gonna continue offering food to the other crabs, but you're gonna just completely ignore the molting crab. You're not gonna give them food. You're not gonna give them water. You're just gonna make sure they've got the cra you just got the crab in there, their exo, their shell, and the bottle around them. <coughs> Okay, so aggression in the tank. So the first thing you should do if you have crabs that are are um, aggressive with each other, you're gonna separate them. So that means picking them up, putting them on opposite sides of the tank. You're gonna double check that you're giving them the correct foods, especially protein, and that you have correct shell options. Um, I wanna take a moment to talk about correct shell op options right here. <clears throat> Sorry. So um, if you have a crab, and this happened to me, my crab, Shells. After them, from, knew enough about hermit crabs to know that they needed to have shells, but he offered them shells that were incompatible with their types, with their bodies, and the wrong kind of shells. And so they hadn't switched shells ever, except for one. And the shells that they needed were like a half an inch to three quarters of an inch bigger than the shells that they were in. And so when you first shot out, the the advice is to get, you know, to measure your shells and to get something a little bit bigger than what they're already in. So that's what I did. But that ended up not being enough because my crabs had grown so much and they needed bigger shells. And so I had a shell, I had um, a hermit crab try to steal a shell from another hermit crab because it was the size that it needed because I hadn't realized how big my hermit crabs really were. So um, 
it, depending on where you get your hermit crabs from, you're going to want to have a variety of shell options bigger than what they're wearing. And sometimes depending if they ended up in a bigger shell than what they really need. But it's really, it's kind of challenging in the beginning when you don't know your crabs well and you haven't had them for very long to know what kind of shells they need. But you'll, it just takes a little bit of time and um, close monitoring, but it comes, it does it. Continue having problems, then you're going to separate them again and you're going to distract them. So you're going to put something smelly in the hermit crab tank, like popcorn, fish, something that, something that has a very um, distinguished or distinguishable, right, smell to it. And that is to distract them from attacking each other. Okay, so if the separating does not work, then you take the aggressor, you put them in the food dish, see if with that smelly food. If that doesn't work, put them in the shell shop with all the new shell. If that doesn't work, then put the aggressor into the water pool. And um, I remember my parents used to do that when we were fighting, when we were, you know, say a naughty word, give us a cold shower. Um, that would probably be considered severe child abuse these days. <laughs> but um, I've had to do all of this. I ended up having to put one of my pool and then he was fine from then on and didn't have any problems he was fine from then on didn't have any more problems i mean i had a lot of problems because that i all of these things i tried none of them worked but putting them in, in the water did work um crabs get really crazy sometimes they just get they kind of fixate on things i don't know if you guys have had this happen with your crabs but mine will fixate on things sometimes and i'm like dude you're like my toddler leave it alone um, you may need to keep your aggressor permanently separated. If they, if you've done everything you can, if your settings are correctly, if your heat and the humidity, the food options, the shells, you've tried distracting them with multiple ways. Crabs might not like other crabs. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard of that happening. And so you might have to actually separate them. <clears throat> so this is, okay, going on to the lifelessness. Um, camera, lifeless crabs sometimes come to life at like, three in the morning, two in the morning, one in the morning, when you're in bed and they're very active for a couple hours, two hours, three hours, and you don't see it because you're in bed. Um, so this is where a camera comes in handy. Um, smelly foods, if you've got li problems with lifelessness, then offer lots of smelly foods. Don't touch them, so do not touch them. They've been handled so much, they need to be left alone. Um, you can continue the PPDS routine. You change the food every single day. You change the water regularly. Don't increase your heat and humidity until all the crabs are showing signs of adjusting. And I'm going to say right now, you may need more than one PPDS tank. Though you, I mean, um, it doesn't hurt your crabs to keep them in the same heat and humidity for too long, but the goal is to get them in the proper heat and humidity. And if you have one crab that is not doing well, sometimes it's better to, you know, get another 10 gallon and to the new one once it's at the same level as the first one and then just see what happens. You're going to want to check that one, the sad crab, um, frequently for fish smell. This fish smell can mean it's either died or is attempting a surface molt. Um, and keep a camera on that little crab and continue for PPDS method, method, meaning you're offering it new foods every single day. And with the crabs that are healthy, you're, you're checking up on them regularly. Let's see. Jeannie says, let's see, I'm going to get caught up in co comments really quickly. Okay. Dakota says my crabs eat powders a couple days in a row. They tend to pick out on a couple items one night, then the other half the next night. Interesting. Jeannie says my crabs eat like small dogs. <laughs> Stacy said, I had very tiny cavipes, cavipes. I'm, I speak Spanish, so cavipes. I have no idea how to say that. It was like in a, small, in a small KK and then put her back and she calmed down. Jeannie says, they do fixate. They're super cute. I can also recommend using rubber sealing strips to seal the tank where you mentioned using silicone between the tank and lid. I know you're way past that part, but I had to t look it up what it's called in English. Um, rubber sealing strip. Silicone is hard to control the thickness of it. I might have to look up some rubber sealing strips and use that instead. I mean, you can use the stuff that, you know, around door frames. Um, those are kind of foam and they stick. I think that would work really well too. <clears throat> I use them with all my models and types too. And sil silicone weather strips right there. See, guys, where were you guys when I was setting up my 90 gallon last time? <laughs> I'm going to strip the silicone off and use weather strips or rubber sealing. Okay, so continue forward. Let's see. 
As said, you may need to move your active crabs to a separate PT PPDS tank and then graduate the active crabs to proper conditions and permanent home and continue monitoring the crab that might be having problems. So um, now we're gonna get into the, the uh, PPDS tank pictures that I mentioned earlier that um, we're gonna talk about the things that they did right and the things they did not do right. And I'm not gonna credit them um, because I didn't wanna embarrass anybody. I, I apologize for that, but I, if you want to know whose tank it is, and if it's if it's your tank, I apologize, um, but we've all, we all start somewhere and we all are learning for years are still learning. So, okay, here's this one right here. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a chance. Let's, based on what we've talked about, what are they doing right and what are they doing wrong? Ready, set, go. <clears throat> okay, silicone weather strips. So that's what that's what Mo was talking about then. Yep. I tried the other type before, but the silicone weather strips are awesome for my vertical tank. The traditional kind of rubber. I had that first. Ha ha ha. Oops, went back. Okay, Stacy, that's exactly what I thought. So we've got a place for food in the white bowl. We've got um, we've got bubblers. We've got salt and fresh water. I and my thing was I, I agreed that the cork might be providing a place to hide. So um, it depends on the size of the crabs. Of course, if you've got little crabs, then I would say that cork would be too big. Uh, if you've got really really big crabs, then they're probably not going to be able to hide super well. But again, you want to double check, make sure that they're not hiding at all. Yes, the pools are great. The pools are fantastic. Um, other things I noticed about this, we don't have humidity. We want to make sure that we're keeping track of the sealed, sealed lid may have high humidity. Um, <clears throat> you can stand the cork up and make it feel secure without fully hiding them then. Yeah, and then that's that gives them something to munch on too. Um, let's see, I've got my... Oh yeah, there's no shells in here and there's no thermostat gauge. So they can't check to see how high, and there's no hygrometer. Um, moss in this case, um, Erica says there's no moss. Sometimes the cork will hold enough moisture. So the purpose of the main purpose of, uh, purpose of the moss, sorry about that, is to help with the humidity. It does give them something extra to munch on and it's something that I would add personally. Um, and I would use Genie's selection of moss just as a plug. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I would say we've got um, places for them to hide in. Possibly we've got um, the the hygrometer and and the thermometer missing and shells. Okay, oops, that was the wrong button. Got to go over here. Okay, what what problems do we see with this tank? And I'm gonna say that over on the right side is where the pools are. So and what are they doing good on? Too much sand. I would agree with that one. Yeah, that's too many places to hide. Yep. Um, yeah, there's this one's this one's kind of fun, honestly, which it's shameful. I mean, it's too bad, you know. Yep. Yeah. So too many places to hide. They've got the the thermometer. I'm guessing that's what that is, right? I can't I can't tell well enough in the bowl. Um, yeah, you don't want it to have you don't want to have your hygrometer and your thermostat directly on the sub. You want them to be above the sub thermostat too close to the sub. Yeah, the thermostat, well, the thermostat needs to be, um, and that's that thing hanging from the middle right there. If you guys can see my mouse, you guys can see my mouse, right? Um, it needs to be, um, I've seen between an inch and up to three inches above the sub. Good, we see the mouse, good. Insulation in the back, I'm guessing it's heated. The shells are good if they're the correct sizes. Um, yeah, so, and then we've got Lots of different shells. Yeah, there's a lot of places to hide in this one. So that's the problem with that one. Okay, okay here's the next one. one. Go ahead, ready, set, go. What are problems that you guys see with this one and what are they doing right? And this is another example. Um, I don't think, I can't tell actually if these pools, this is one where they, this is the only picture they posted. So I don't know if they are adequate. <clears throat> The gauges on the sub, yep. Sand, so much sand. Painted shells, can't tell how deep the sand is. I don't see shells. Um, let's see, yeah, this is a painted shell. This is a paint Can't tell what it is. Um, um, and um, 
Yeah, I'm going to say they're probably going to have problems. Well, they've got the wood. There's there's too much to hide in here. Um, they might be having problems with humidity. I don't know, though. I would say that, yeah. They need more moss. In here. <clears throat> the meter's central, so that's good. Yep. Um, let's see. Depending on how many hermit crabs they have, this might not be enough shells. And again, uh, it depends on the quality. I don't think this one is. This one's one of those green turbos. And they're not going to be obviously using those. Those would be something to put like um, one of the, uh, never mind. We're not going to even joke. I was going to say, never mind. Not even going to bring it up. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Moving on. <clears throat> okay. With this tank here. Water. Yep, the pools are missing on this one. Tiny pools. Um, check out the back of the tank. What is on the back of the tank? Yep, tiny heater. <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> I think it's really, it's actually pretty adorable. <laughs> it is really tiny. This tank is 30 gallon, a 20 gallon tank. It's not a 10. Um, it's pretty big for a heater that small. Um, they've got chunks of moss in there, so that's good. They've got shells, and they've got, looks like green sand. Nope, they've got pellets. So, what, okay, I... Don't feed your hermit crabs pellets. Uh, don't feed them her, anything that's labeled hermit crabs. Almost anything for hermit crabs is not going to be safe for them. Cage is high up. Let's see. Yep. What is that back there? Oh, this is right here. So we spot it's we don't want it over there because that's only we want it in the middle of the tank, about an inch to three above the sub gets the best readings. Yep, exactly. Unless the hermit crab food is single ingredient and not fish meal. Fish meal is basically a dump for pretty much all sorts of crap that they we should not be eating. And yes, those those gauges are almost always, yes, I would agree with that. They're almost always very inaccurate. <clears throat> depending on how much it's over here this, this might be too much for hiding okay oh yes thank you that's a good catch genie um they're only using eco earth they're not using sand they need you need to switch it switch it out so you're using more sand than eco earth <clears throat> this one cracks me up i think this one's fantastic sponge in the water dish plus no way they can submerge yep and it's not a good enclosure it's not a sealed tank that's another good point yeah the doll head is funny <laughs> isn't that great i thought i saw that and was like i have to include it <clears throat> stacy you love those yep there's hiding places in here um I'm guess is it shell shock putting water? I don't know what's going on with this right here. Yeah, they can hide back here. They can hide in here. There's they can push the dirt around. This is actually it looks like it's a decent amount of dirt. You don't want them to be able to push it to, around too much and bury themselves. Um, <clears throat> guessing this is for the food. They've got a good size heat mat. I would say that's probably a good size. You want it to cover about two thirds of the back of the tank. And with how simple this is, it might be enough that size right there. No insulation, no gauge, no gauge. And um, nope, it's a sealed top. That's glass. It's really hard to see, but it is, it's is—it's sealed on the top. How would they even get into that pool shell container? No way in and out. I was wondering about that too. I'm like, do they have really big hermit crabs? Because my big crabs could get into that, but obviously not my little ones. And Yep. Shells. These look like they're all seashells, so that won't work for hermit crabs. There's nowhere for hermit crabs. Um, I'm wondering what kind of sand this is. Do you guys recognize that sand? It kind of looks like it came from the great outdoors. <clears throat> it doesn't look like it's play sand. It looks like it's sand that they got from outside, which is, as you guys should know, is a no-no. Uh-uh-uh. Sorry, I'm going to go into mom mode here. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. 
So I'm going to say that they're going to probably have problems with the humidity in this one and probably even heat because there's no insulation. Okay, so this one, oh, this one, this one just overwhelms me looking at it as a PPDS tank. So go ahead. Good pools, right? Good pools. I like the pools. <clears throat> Maybe that Fluker's beach sound. Um, that's good to know, Moa. Um, it says the sound looks like her sand does when mixed with e e eco earth. So that's good to know. Good insulation and pools. Too much stuff. So much in there. Um, let's see. Heat pad too bag, big. Let me see. Too low. Lots of food and shells, though. Gauge too close to the sub. Yeah, the gauge is way close to the sub. Um, I don't know. Is that a heat pad back there, guys? Can you tell? I don't know if that is because that might be too big, but... 86 degrees, I would say it's probably too big. That is that is way too hot for a PPDS tank. Yep, it's a heat pad. Low humidity and high heat. I mean, if this is their first day in PPDS, then 74% humidity is good for starting, but it's, yeah, that is, that is way too hot, way too hot. Yeah, so this one has too much, too many places to hide and the gauge in the wrong spot. Lots of shell options. That's really good. And look, um, doesn't this come from Courtney's shop? I recognize that. Maybe not. Maybe maybe Courtney's not the only one who sells it. But lots giving them good foods. And, and lots of shells, good pools. Um, but yeah, lots of places to hide, which is no bueno. Okay, here's the next one. Yeah, the exotics like high hots, yes. Um, high heat, yes, they do. Yep, pellets. Dyed moss, no gauge, no water. And um, Alexandra, uh, go ahead and explain why um, dyed moss is no bueno. And this might not actually be dyed moss. I have seen moss this brilliant, um, but I would say that it probably is dyed um, because by the time it gets to you and it's fro and you freeze and all that, it's going to be darker um, than that. Than that, yes, it's because they eat it. Yeah, um, and the heater small. Uh, what other comments do you guys have about the heater? <clears throat> yep, Stacy says the heater is too low. It's in the wrong place. It's too small and it is too low. Zero enrichment. Yeah, there's nothing for them to do. Like I was saying, when you first get your hermit crabs, having it, like if they're not doing anything, they're lifeless, they're trying to die, then this is fine. But you want to be able to give them things to do, things to climb on, not hide in, climb on, move around, be active, all of that. I mean, this is, this is boring to look at for us too. Um, and even just having pools, they climb on the pools. That's, that's enough for them to climb on in the beginning. Okay, I think we're almost done here. Okay. I'm I'm alt tabbing between my screens, by the way. That's why I'm why I'm you can hear my keyboard clicking if you can hear it. <clears throat> Infrared heat pads work by heating objects, not by heating the air. Yep, and that's a problem. So we need to have heat pads that heat the air, not objects. The gauge is too low. It's on the sub. Too many hiding places. Gauge. Yeah, that is really, really low. 66. That is very low. Um, uh, too much sand. Let's see. I'll go back to it. Just meant hiding places. What does PPDS stand for? It stands for post postpartum. <laughs> Just death syndrome. <laughs> uh, I have little kids. Postpartum's on the brain sometimes. Um, let's see. Yes, I would agree. This is too much sand. You can, I mean, if hermit crabs are currently living in this, and I don't know if they are, you can see that they've been pushing it around. And if you have too much sand, they will, um, they will go through, they will push it around. They'll bury in it. Let's see. <clears throat> I have ultra therm. That looks like an ultratherm. Ultratherm has said their heater heat, heats objects. The infrared is what ultratherm pads are, but you need some wood to climb or something to help hold heat. <clears throat> Sorry. 
post-purchase death syndrome and post-purchase death reduction method. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Mine! This is my first PPDS tank. And guys, it's perfect. Okay, it's perfect. There are no faults with it. <laughs> uh, that's Neptune. That's Neptune. And this is the very first time I caught Neptune climbing something. I was like, he's climbing! He's climbing! He went from here, reached up and grabbed that and pulled himself up. And this is like a four, you can't tell, but this is like a four inch distance. I was so impressed. I was like, holy cow. The plastic canvas box. So um, I have um, too close to the water for the gauge. So my gauge is actually, this is this is a, a side shot. The gauge is actually about right here, but it looks like it's above the water. So um, it's right next to my thing, which is right here. So when I first got my hermit crabs, they came from a guy who had them in perfect heat and humidity, but he was feeding them pellets. And so my hermit crabs were very active from the very, very beginning. And um, they, I gave them things to never figured out how to get underneath it, but they climbed up on it and then they climbed up all over here. They were so bored um, when I first got them because they were super, super active. And, and then I ended up, you'll see right here, this is my second one. Um, I didn't have my gauge in this one because it's in my main tank and I didn't want to build it. And um, this right here, it's on a stand, which you can't see. It does need to have been a, a little bit higher. So... Um, but by this point, like my system was down a lot better than when I first started, but I ended up adding this thing right here for them to climb on. This is my second set of crabs, this little dude it's all over the place. And I kept this in my catch my kitchen. <clears throat> and so the heat pad, it was sufficient. Normally it would need to be a little bit bigger than that, but it was plenty, plenty warm in there. So they were totally fine. My current place, um, my temporary crab temporary tote it it get it borders on too cold and so i've had to do a lot to keep it warm because the current place is totally different it's so weird how different houses even when you keep in the at the same temperature are different the jungle gym made of a crate they loved it so well, let me show you really fast so the thermostat gauge this is this exact same tank so the thermostat gauge and my thermo thermi thingy thermostat gauge was right here holding um hanging down here when it, we're in this one. So it, it makes it look like it's shortened, but it's not. This is warm castings. I would keep a little tiny plate right here. I can't tell if it's there in here or not with my um, green sand. And then this was the little paint things I was talking about earlier with the six slots in here. Um, these crabs were tiny, so they could and usually hid back here. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to give them something to to play on um, that where they couldn't hide, and this worked really, really well. They they had so much fun, and that thing is in there. I without breaking it because <laughs> I wanted to make sure it wouldn't tip over. Because I mean, it looks like they could tip it over really easy, but it is so tight in there. It kind of you can see that it kind of like bows. That's the right word, right? It's because it's super tight in there. Okay, let's see. Okay, so here's the PPDS menu. Um, this, I don't know how I'm going to get this to you guys. This is a JPEG of a Word document. Um, Stacy, how can I get this to them easier? Uh, the actual Word document for the PPDS menu that I promised. What's a good way for me to get this to them? I don't think I can attach anything in here. I can put in Dropbox for them. Yes. So I'm going to send that to you really fast, Stacy. while we are right here chatting. Where are you in here? Pulling up. I just messaged you yesterday. But going to attach, add, open more actions. Sorry, everybody gets to be dealing with this. Oh, crap. My landscaper is calling me right now. I can't answer. Um, let's see. Working on... CrabCon. Okay, so PPS and just sent it. There we go. Okay, so I just added that in there. Um, let me come back here. Did I exit out? Guys, nope, I did not. There we go. Um, okay, guys, I, uh, dang it. Okay, I'll, I'll call him back. I'm like, I'm gonna, I have to answer this call because it's usually really important. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to call him back in just a bit. But I have I have gone over info when I started PPDS. Mine only has a few days left before moving into the 40-gallon. This is pretty much the end. 
So let's let's do five minutes questions or just really quick questions, and then I'm going to call my landscaper back to find out if there's something going on that I need to know. Um, I can actually text him. Let me text him really fast and be like, "Sorry, doing a presentation. I'll call back in a minute." <laughs> Okay, there. Okay, so Stacy just got that menu in there. I put together the menu. One of the hardest parts about the PPDS method was the menu. And so um, I put here things to buy from Crab Street Journal. I double checked with Stacy to make sure that these things would always be available. And she says she pretty much always has them on hand. Um, and then from the pet store, you can substitute any of these you want. Um, Freeze dried shrimp has like calcium in it, it has it has protein, um, crickets in a can. Oh my heavens. My, my heart crabs cr crazy over that blood worms. You can also buy it from Walmart, cut a bone. You can crush it or you can give it to them. Non crushed. You can also buy that from Walmart. Um, to note foods must be salt free or contain sea salt, but feed sparingly and sugar free. No preservatives organic. If possible, all meats must be served unspiced and unseasoned can be cooked or raw. Keep an eye on them. These crabs, they, they drag it away. You stick a toothpick through them. Go up and down pet aisles, grab anything that's single or two ingredients of improved foods. Cats especially have great options for little servings of meat, tiny, tiny little packets. And then this is the schedule right here. Do this, um, you can repeat this. You don't wanna repeat the same food once in a seven day period, but this is a two week uh, plan right here that you can use across the whole thing, or you can add to it if you want to. Substitute any of the above for anything you have on hand. Make sure it's a similar substitution though, and recognize that many things on the list uh, hit more than one requirement. Protein needs to be fed every single day. Fruits and veggies, six out of seven days. Calcium, four out of seven days. Fats, three out of seven days. Other, two out of seven days. So like popcorn and bark, things like that. Stick to small portions. Change the food every day. Never leave food from the day before. Do not food, feed the same food twice in a seven-day period. Food that isn't touched after eight hours should be removed and replaced with something new. And then get a wise camera. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see. If you guys like the slideshow, I can embed it on Crab Street Journal. I'm fine. I'm These resources are great. Crab Street Journals is where it's at. It's true. There's so much stuff on there. I don't really have any questions, but this was very interesting. You have a great speaker voice too. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been an author for ten years, and I I present at conferences regularly. And I was I have a podcast. I'm on. It's called Six Figure Authors, and I'm a co-host with two other people, and so we do this a lot. I just have to make sure I don't stutter. You guys notice I stutter, right? <laughs> when I'm trying to think of what I'm saying, my brain goes faster than my voice and my mouth, and so it does. It has a hard time keeping up. But um, thank you guys every much so much. Thank you, Jeannie, um, for that. Um, Please try it. Slideshow will be good for reference later. And if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to me. Reach out, uh, post in the Facebook group, the Lycos Facebook group. It's a huge, wonderful resource. And the admins and the mods there are really, really great. Uh, I really Fantastic. Keep, keep, a good, um, keep a good pulse on everything, all the research and everything out there. <laughs> it's nice to have someone else present information. We all do, We all do learn in different ways with different approaches. I agree with that. Um, and I like, I like presenting because it helps me make sure I've solidified stuff. Like I said, about a year. And so researching up on this, just making sure I had everything accurate was very helpful for me as well. Okay. I am doing a presentation tomorrow on my Disneyland. Her did I show you guys? I did not. Let me show you really fast. My, my, um, current tank. And then you guys can go and see if you want to come to my presentation tomorrow. Give me a second. CrabCon. And where is my tank in here? I'll just give you a little bit of a, here, we'll do this. I'm going to just give you guys a, a sneak peek of it by sharing, sharing this. Is that, nope, photos. Oh, it won't let me. Dag nabbit. Hmm. Disneyland. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow. There you go. My hermit crab tank is very bright and very happy. So I did a, I put together a hermit crab tank that would be fun to look at. And you guys can see colors in here. I've got lots of colors and I'll be talking about what I used, the materials I used to go through the, to, um, to set it up for them so that they would have what they needed. So I was going to show you guys a picture. I actually, this one right here up close, but 
it won't let me show it. It won't let me share it. Anyway, so that's going to be tomorrow at the same time. So um, yeah, um, thank you guys so much for joining me. And again, if you have questions, go ahead and post them in the Facebook group and you can tag me if you want to, but there's a bit of what, um, what I talked about too. So peekaboo, <laughs> you're all in this year. Um, she stepped up and I said, I want to do X, Y, Z. And what's not to love about that? <laughs> um, okay. Awesome guys. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you all later. Okay. Bye. I'm going to go drink like 10 gallons of water now because it is 32% humidity in this room right now, but it's like 16% outside. <laughs> okay. Bye.